What's going on everyone? Thank you to uh, another, no, how was that? Let me do it again. What's going on everyone? And thank you to another episode of FK Irons here live on Facebook. And like I mentioned before, I used to do this show on Sundays and that was actually killing my Sunday, which is basically my only day off almost in half. So I decided to do it during the week. And today we have a pretty, uh, pretty interesting topic. A lot of you guys have got the science, you know, thousands of science have gone out. And yes, I know, there are so many more that are, uh, we have to fulfill and distributors are about to get. But anyway, so there are a lot of people that have been asking us a lot of questions about this machine. And even though there are a lot of videos in Facebook, I decided, to, uh, Facebook and YouTube as well, I decided to put this video together and basically give you uh, a good idea of all the parameters for lining, for shading, and also for uh, coloring. So uh, we're gonna start by telling you a little bit about the machine. And again, some of you already may know uh, what I'm going to be talking about, uh, but some of you may be new to a lot of the things that I'm going to be addressing today. So we're going to switch to the overhead camera right here. And let me know, guys, if you guys can hear me. What's up, Sick? Uh, Sick, uh, your shipping boss is right there right now. Anyway, so guys, if you have uh, questions, please address them in the chat uh, right here. And once I'm done with a review, I am going to be addressing uh, all your questions. So going back again to uh, the overhead uh, camera. So here we have the sign. So this machine, first of all, is a machine that you guys are going to be treating like uh, a machine of its own breed. So forget everything you know about tattoo machines per se, because even about uh, our own tattoo machines, even though this machine may hit similar to a Spectra Halo, some people say so, to a Spectra Direct, it's very subjective. Um, uh, you know, that opinion, because in reality, this machine is actually something uh, completely different than any machine that we have designed in the past. Uh, starting from the shape, form, factor of this machine uh, to the actual mechanism that propels the needle is completely different. And because of that, I cannot tell you that this machine is comparable, uh, for example, like a Spectra Halo at 7 volts, because I'd be lying, because they are completely different mechanism. And also, this machine has a motor that we have custom designed specifically to suit the need of a machine of this style. So the first thing that I want to mention, guys, is that, uh, as you guys know, this is basically one of our machines inside of, of a grip. And when you look at those of, you know, both, uh, both items, you're going to realize that they have uh, similar features, you know. So, for example, let's compare... A motor of a Spectra Ajax that I have right here and a grip. You know, if I if I do this, if I will be able to do this, um, you know, you'll be getting something similar to this. And that was actually the concept of the Spectra Scion to uh, to basically uh, house a machine in a very comfortable grip. And that's how we have achieved with this project right here. But again, different motor was required and different mechanism was required. So let me dive in right into uh, to the grip and start talking about how the grip works. Uh, basically, you have the grip, that the grip is completely out of clavable. You can perfectly sanitize it with your uh, sterilization, cold sterilization product. Uh, you can bag it, put in an outer clave. You can uh, clean it thoroughly. One thing that I got to advise you guys don't do because I already got, got this uh, question uh, via email. Do not ultrasonic washer the grip because anything that's made out of aluminum, once you put in the ultrasonic washer, it, it actually chips off the anodizing, which is the layer that protects the metal from the outside. So as long as you don't do that, you'll be able to spray chemicals on the... Uh, on the grip, you're going to be able to uh, sterilize it. Uh, we call sterilization or put it in an autoclave. So to adjust the, the throw on this machine, basically you're going to hold the machine like this. Let me switch again so you guys can see this. You're going to hold it like this, ensuring that you guys grab the red part, right? And I've also um, got a comment of someone trying to do this and <laughs> And, uh, you know, they were spinning the motor. So uh, remember, the motor also pops. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. So when you're about to ratchet the, the pen, just, you know, hold it like this and basically turn it. Now, ensure that if you don't have a straight RCA, that you are aware of that. Because if you have something like this, like an LRCA, which I have somewhere in here. Let me see if I can find it right here. Let me find it. And... Um, if you have something like this, you got to be really careful 
because if you continue ratcheting, you're gonna be twisting the wire. At least here you can see it, but with a straight RCA, you may not see it until you tangle the wire uh, really, uh, really, really bad. And you gotta be careful with that because you can start breaking your wire. So uh, the best way to ratchet is never to go and go and go. It's actually to go, let go, go, let go, go, let go. So that way you allow the cable to actually untangle itself. And if it's necessary, you know, you can always just do this and, you know, ensure that you don't work with any uh, tangling in your wire. So um, believe it or not, this is, uh, this is a, a comment that I got by someone and it's a very valid comment because it, you know, it happens to me too sometimes, you know, I'm not even thinking and, you know, I'm concentrating into the tattoo and I do that and that happens to me as well. So um, this is why I decided to put kind of like a foolproof uh, guide of all the things that you're supposed to do and how to do th certain things. Uh, and of course, we're going to be talking about uh, the lining, the shading and the coloring with the machine, but I want to address the, uh, the simple uh, stuff first. So. Uh, that's one thing. Now, I remember that I talked to someone that uh, said, oh, I cannot pop my motor in the sign. And uh, it's very simple to put the motor and to remove the motor. Uh, probably if your machine is, is it's brand new like this one, you see. And purposely I got this machine because it may be a little bit hard at first, but that's just because the O-ring that creates the tension in between the motor and the body, uh, you know, it's brand new. So uh, we always lubricate this O-ring. So, let me just uh, switch again. So basically, um, remove this. And one, uh, you know, the first time you remove the motor, what you want to do is you want to push in as you turn in, okay? By pushing in, you're decompressing the O-ring. Therefore, you're allowing the O-ring to kind of like uh, give you a little bit of room to twist, okay? So again, you push in while you're twisting. And that's how you're going to remove the motor. Now, we're gonna uh, talk about the, the cam feature and why you would wanna remove this motor. This cam right here is the 3.2 millimeters. And again, this is the tattooing version of the SpectraScyan. We're gonna talk also briefly about the uh, uh, cosmetic uh, version of the Scion X, which is a different machine, slimmer, for those that are into the uh, cosmetic tattooing. Now, moving forward with this. Now, the other, uh, the other thing is that when, once you pop the motor, I don't know if you guys realize that inside we have some concave uh, type of uh, washer cap in there, right? So there is a reason why this washer is concave, and that is to allow the bearing to actually slide in into the slot that you guys see back there. So if you're doing this and for any reason uh, the motor doesn't go any further, which is the case right here, all you have to do is simply wiggle a little bit and that's it. Never try to push or force thing. This machine is very well uh, constructed with, you know, accurate tolerances. So if something doesn't go in, most likely there is something that is not uh, being done properly. So again, I'll do it again for you guys. If you remove the motor, and I'm actually purposely putting in the situation where it doesn't go in right here, all I have to do is not keep pushing, simply just move it, spin it, or simply do this really quick and that's it. Now, when you twist, you're going to do exactly the same thing. It's very important that you guys remember to push in and twist. Uh, the same thing when you guys are removing uh, the motor. Now, another thing that I'm going to recommend you guys do, and I see a lot of comments already popping, so give me just one second right here. Um, I'm going to read the comments. Just give me guys just one second, okay? So another thing that I'm going to recommend is that once you guys remove the motor, uh, always keep the O-ring lubricated. By keeping the O-ring uh, lubricated, you are going to avoid that O-ring to uh, uh, gain additional friction there. And remember, that O-ring is there because it's actually sealing uh, the outside from the inside of the machine, and there is a little bit of compression. Uh, so remember, just to keep a little bit of uh, lubrication in there, you can use even A and D ointment, or if you have a uh, PTFE uh, lubrication from your Halo or your Edge, you can use that as well. Uh, don't use any chemical. Um, you know, abrasive chemical oil. Uh, this machine does not require any sort of lubrication, so please do not attempt um, to put anything inside the machine. Now, we have covered motor, we have covered grip. Let me tell you a little bit about the give adjustment. Now, the give adjustment, a lot of you guys already know this because I mentioned this in so many videos, but once again, we're going to put all the topics together in this video, and I'm going to go briefly and explain to you how the give adjustment works. So we have an H right here and an S, okay? Some of you are going to be able to see it there. 
focus, focus, focus. There you go. So there is an H and an S all around the rim of the gib. Now, now with that H and S is doing is telling you hard and soft setting. So once you go towards the hardest setting and it stops, you know, remember, don't go any further. With this machine, you're not gonna overdo anything if you see that things are not going forward. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna back off one click, okay? And every time you spin the give knob, it is recommended that you guys also apply a little bit of pressure in that direction and kind of like force it to click. Why am I saying this is because the give knob has about 12 uh, to 11 clicks and by pressing in, you're ensuring that you're actually snapping the give knob in every position, okay? And that you are never are in between two, uh, two positions. You never wanna be there because uh, you don't want to create any type of conflict with a dry pin that actually glides through uh, the getting up. So remember, either you're going harder or softer in your setting, always back off one or two clicks before the limit, never leave it locked up. And remember, it only uh, turns about 270 degrees, so it's, it's like almost a turn, okay? So either this way or this way, always back off a click or two clicks and uh, Give it a little bit of, of a push in this direction when you are spinning, like so. That way you're gonna ensure that you never end up in between uh, two clicks. And you're gonna notice that there is a little bit of play right here, okay? See, the, the give knob always has this little bit of play. And that little bit of play, it's, it is actually purposely there because that is going to ensure that there is never uh, the possibility of a conflict uh, with a dry pin right here that pushes the cartridge. So that's the reason why, you know, uh, it has that little bit of play and it has to be there. Okay, what else? Let me just do a little bit of uh, reading here on the chat uh, because we have a lot of comments. So um, people are asking if we send machines to Colombia. Yes, we do send machine to Colombia. Um, but also we have distributors there. So guys, uh, make sure to check fkirons.com uh, and there is a link right there uh, about distributors. So check all the distributors worldwide there. And uh, a lot of them, they already have machines in stock and some of them, they're about to get the machines or, or, um, or some, something like that. Uh, what else? So Christian Ogando is a super grateful with this invention. I'm waiting for a full color black and full silver uh, greetings. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people also ask, Hey, are you guys are going to introduce uh, new colors? Sorry. And yes, we may introduce more colors, but that's not going to happen. Probably. I don't know, maybe, uh, closer to end of next year. You know, we want to be cut up. We want to be stocked up. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of conventions and colors always a, um, a logistic nightmare, you know, <laughs> because, uh, people order certain colors, certain colors sell faster than others. So we don't want to slow down the process any further. So, uh, we're not gonna create custom colors probably for like another year, I would say. So that's that. Okay. Let's continue with a, uh, with a tutorial, uh, overview of the sign. Now, since I have the machine with a grip off, let me show you another thing. And you guys see these two O rings right here. Okay. This O rings right here, basically they're adding uh, additional stabilization to the grip. So when you close the grip, let me just move this. So when you close the grip, what this is doing is adding a little bit of additional friction. So you never get any type of play here on the grip. Okay. So, um, in order to keep those O-rings always healthy, also, uh, I would recommend that you guys uh, lube them up a little bit with ointment or with uh, PTFE lubrication. Uh, could be again, the same ointment that you use for tattooing. You can just dab a little bit around it or even better, a little bit around the grip. So that way you're always going to have a little bit of a slippery, uh, fit while having friction at the same time. And in this case, friction is a good thing because it's what is keeping, uh, the grip out of, uh, any play. Uh, to be honest with you, we could have actually, uh, gone away from that, you know, cause we already had the ratcheting system right here and that stabilizes the grip, but you know, I like to overdo things sometimes for additional safety. So this is the reason why, uh, we have two O-rings right there. Uh, what else? So yeah, simple as that. Now, should you ever need to replace the ratchet? The ratchet is this component right here and it's what it allows the click, uh, the grip to click into place. Basically pop it with your finger. It snaps like this It's the same ratchet that we use on our, uh, click ergo. 
nothing new here, but uh, you know, should you need to replace it, you also can do that, and it's very simple how to do it. Now, let's talk about the things that uh, we've been getting a lot of questions. Uh, question number one is lining, so I wanna address that one right from the bat. Um, people are asking voltage parameter, and I was having this conversation the other day with, uh, with this guy that runs um, a YouTube channel. Um, I don't remember the name of his, sh uh, his shop, and he does an amazing video. He has a couple of videos there. I'm gonna list the, the, the channel after I look him up again. But he was he actually did a video and he was saying that he was running the, the, the spectra sign at uh, uh, eight and a half, nine volts, or nine volts, nine and a half, something like that. And he thought it was a little bit slow for him. Now, uh, then he told me that that's what he found online and what people are saying that are the maximum parameters. So. I wanna stop right here and I wanna address the voltage parameter just to clear the waters and make you guys understand what actually voltage mean in this machine. So if we're talking about Spectra Halo or a Spectra Direct, uh, nine volts is probably a voltage suitable for uh, most of you artists out there. It's probably one of the you know top, top, top you know uh, uh, ranges of voltage that you're ever going to run the machine. You can go nine and a half. But also in other videos, I did say that yes, this machine runs around the 9.5 volts for lining. Now, when I give that parameter, I was giving you a parameter, a mid parameter. And when I'm talking about mid parameter, I'm talking about not 14 uh, round liners, I'm talking about more of the standard five and seven round liner, okay? So that's the voltage that worked for me the most when I'm lining with those type of rounds. And again, that is the way I line, because a lot of you guys may be required to line even faster or even slower than that based on uh, the parameters that you guys uh, um, you know, are required to achieve the result, the effect, okay? So with this machine, you can push this machine as high as you want. Uh, obviously, way too high, it's never gonna end up in a good result in the skin, so. But I push this machine, for example, uh, with uh, 11, um, 14 run liners, 11 run liner, in the neighborhood of the 11 volts, you know, and 10 and a half is actually my sweet spot for the big, big stuff. And let me, uh, again, stop right there. There are guys that line super, super fast with those big round liners. Me personally, I'm not one of those guys that line super fast with the big round liners. I actually prefer to see my line. I prefer not to get a lot of splashing uh, ink in my line, so therefore I go slower. Uh, again, you could push it even, you know, you could push it harder, but uh, 10 and a half is what works for me for that. Average, yes, it's the 9.5. That's probably what I would use, um, you know, if I'm starting a tattoo fresh from, you know, from star and I'm starting to map it out and I'm starting to drag lines or I'm doing uh, average lines in the tattoo. Now, when we're building up or we are trying to uh, uh, pack those lines, those big round liners, you know, you are going to have to push the machine to whatever voltage that suits you. It's safe to say that this machine, you know, you could even push it up to 12 volts if you if you want. But here's the thing, 12 volts is a lot of RPMs. 12 volts, it's not gonna end up in good healing, okay? That is way, way too fast. But again, don't take everything that I say, um, you know, so hardcore. Like I always mentioned before, you know, it's good to start slow and realizing what doesn't work for you first. I mean, I think that's one of the best advice that I can give you guys with this machine and with any other tattoo machine. First of all, realize what doesn't work for you. Starting very, very low is the safest way to try parameters than, you know, guessing that uh, 10 volts is where it's at and all of a sudden that's way too fast or way too slow for you. So start very slow, crank it up, start dialing the machine and, and you know, give yourself a chance to discover the machine, give yourself a chance to uh, to understand the system because this machine is completely different than any other uh, tattoo machine we have developed and also is different than any other pen machine out there. And why I say that it's different than any pen out there is because the system that propels this machine is not a swatch system or uh, the, the usual direct drive system that, that, that some of the machines out there have where it's almost like a direct with a wire, which it's a great system as well, but this one is different. So this machine, um, without getting into much detail, it's more like a coil machine uh, the way it hits. There is a swinging element inside the machine that does that. So you definitely get the slap of the, the go and the back. So um, again, 
we are also using a bigger motor and because we're using a bigger motor we have more copper there so the resistance of the of the motor is completely different than a motor that you would find on a uh, spectra halo direct or, or an edge so this one is going to require a little bit more of torque now let me rephrase something else once again why am i talking about volts and volts and volts and volts and volts about lining okay well the reason why is because this motor on this machine it is probably one of the few if not the only pin that is going to allow you to run the pin very 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 slow so this machine can start running in the neighborhood of the four volts and i'm going to do a demonstration right now i have done in another videos but let's see why uh the reason the reason why of this motor okay so let me pop a cartridge uh let's see i have uh one right here we're gonna switch cameras again and here we go all right so power supply right here the first thing that I want to do probably I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more I'm gonna do that so you guys can see the details can see the machine running and the whole nine yards so let me actually go so I want to see how low I can go with this machine with this cartridge and then we're gonna try with another cartridge let me see what cartridge do I have right here um, yeah have a couple of cartridges right here you guys can see right here we have some other cartridges so uh let's go as low as 2.8 volts 2.8 volts uh yes the needle moved a little bit but it didn't do much right it's actually very very low now let's see 10 volts uh three volts i'm sorry look at this three volts and i'm starting to move uh the needle this is completely slow you know there is no other machine that i've owned uh, rotary wise that uh, pen machine that can can do this stuff at three volts now why would you want to get a machine running that low well very 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 simple um, if you are uh, let's say a pointillism artist you know some some of the pointillism artists actually use the machine really fast but some of the pointillism artists uh, use the machine slow and they poke and they basically chase every single uh, poke that the machine has given them and they use that towards their advantage now you may want to be uh, doing some type of shading that requires uh, this type of uh, this type of stippling, you know, like stippling shading, like salt and pepper, you know, traditional tattooing. You may be uh, very much uh, benefited from this feature. So again, the motor has a wide range of uh, dialability, if that's the word, where you can dial the motor really, really slow. You can run it really high and get a whole range of effects, a whole range of options, a whole range of power just with one single machine so this is the reason why i say that you cannot compare this machine to any other machine that you own already or to any of the machines that we actually make in our own lineup because the behavior of the motor is completely different it's kind of like uh it's kind of like you know we have our conventional motor for a spectra halo that works within this range now this motor probably works within this range because it can go a little bit further in the lower scale and a little bit higher and therefore in between you're going to get a different experience every time you crank a fraction of a volt so that's the reason why so to sum it up lining starts slow if it doesn't start at two at three at four at five just uh give it to it you know make sure that you experiment the different parameters and make sure that you allow yourself to you know tattoo with it don't get frustrated uh, frustrated if you know you cannot get things uh from the gecko because i'm like i mentioned before it's a, it's a different system and get to know it okay uh it may take you a tattoo it may take you one minute two minutes ten minutes let it be myself you know in, in the beginning of even using myself the machine i actually discovered that of course the more tattoos i do the more comfortable and the more uh, I understand the approach that I want to take uh, in terms of voltage and the machine. So that's that. Now, let's uh, let's do another test right now. So remember, this machine started running right now at three volts. What happened when I switch cartridges? Let's put a magnum right here. Look what happened with this magnum right here. With this magnum, and I have a little bit of lube right there. That's actually uh, Teflon. Uh, with a um, with a different magnet uh, with a different magnet with a different cartridge uh, this machine is not starting at three volts but with this cartridge the machine is starting at three volts 
Now, stop it, change cartridges, and with this cartridge, it doesn't start at three volts. Why is that? Am I doing something wrong? Is my machine bad? Uh, did I break anything? Did I get a faulty machine? No, you did not get a faulty machine. All it means is that this cartridge, for some reason, has a greater tension than the other cartridge. And you're going to find that with cartridges that have membra uh, membrane versus cartridges with no membranes. And even in between uh, cartridges with members from different brands and different rounds from within a, the same brand, you are going to find that the tension varies a little bit from cartridge to cartridge. So don't stick to a number thinking that, okay, my lowest parameter uh, is the four, uh, because probably for a different brand of needles or a different configuration, the, your lowest parameter may be different. So again, keep an open mind uh, when it comes to, uh, to voltage. Voltage is just what the machine is asking you. It's not, uh, it's not a law, you know, <laughs> basically. It's not a law. Uh, there's no law here. Uh, there's no law. The law is what works for you and what, what has to go on in your tattooing. So experiment with the vaults. Now, what else? Let's talk a little bit about um, shading. Shading is going to be exactly the same situation. And now, uh, when we approach shading, we should we should think about shading as, uh, which is the same for, for lining, but let me dissect it into shading right now because I spoke about lining. Shading, the more needles you have, the more resistance you have uh, you know, against the skin. So it's not the same to push a 5 Magnum than to push a 23 Magnum. So that doesn't mean that the more needles I have, the higher I have to go with this machine. And why am I saying that? Because it all depends the type of effect that you're trying to achieve with, uh, you know, with your tattoo machine, with your sign. So let me give you an example. For example, I use uh, five magnets. You know, I love five magnets. So rather than using rounds for those tight corners, I usually uh, use a five magnum and, uh, I feel really comfortable, you know, and I've been using five magnums since the coil days, and I always love them for those little, uh, you know, little lines, little uh, corners, and stuff like stuff like that. So with a five magnum, I'm gonna use a five magnum actually fast because I'm gonna use that probably to kind of like even line with it sometimes, and I want to go in and out, in and out, and I like that machine to be fast. But let's say I'm trying to. Um, uh, you know, probably if I'm trying to work some soft uh, transition, maybe black and gray. Now we're not talking about color. Now we're not talking about trying to emulate lines with magnet. We're talking about uh, uh, doing some some soft touch, smooth black and gray. Probably I am going to use a 50 magnum or 17 or 21 magnum, and I'm going to run it even slower than my 5 magnum. And again, remember at the beginning I, I said. The more needles you ha you have, the more resistance you have. And when we're talking about lining, I was saying that uh, you know with the smaller rounds, you're gonna go low. You're gonna be required lower volts, and when you go higher, you're require higher volts. But when we're talking about magnum, you know magnums. Um, and again, this can apply to lining depending what type of tattooing you're doing. But in a generic uh, way of speaking, uh, with magnums, you have even more flexibility because the needles are arranged in this way, not like in a point, they're more like a flat uh, brush. So um, you would wanna go slower to maybe just scrape, you know, that sounds a little bit harsh, but just to like take advantage of that dragging of the needle to achieve an effect. And this is the reason why uh, we use probably uh, for something that is maybe like a smooth transition or just a bare uh, soft tone, I may actually use a larger needle and I would drop the voltage in that situation. So uh, this is the type of approach that I take uh, off tattooing myself. There are a lot of people that don't actually change the voltage. They would probably dial that machine at nine and a half volts and they would do everything with it. They would go soft, they would go hard, they would do big lines, they would they would do everything, but you know, most of us, um, most of us, we may take this approach, uh, certain, you know, for certain cases, but for some other cases, we may want to actually, you know, alter and play the vault. And that's why power supplies, you know, they have uh, up and down um, buttons, so we can actually uh, control that setting to suit ourselves. Now, we're talking about, um, you know, how this machine can be dialed in and, and get different effects with different type of needle. Let's talk about the third dimension that this machine brings uh, to tattooing um, that 
probably no other pen out there has it, or at least no other pen uh, similar to this one. Now, go back here, and for that, I am going to, let me just move back a bit again, there you go. And for this, I am going to remove the grip again. Remember that at the beginning, we talked about uh, hardening or stiffening the, um, the give, right? Now, not only you can rely on voltage, hand uh, technique, but now you can also rely on mechanical feedback of this machine. As you guys know, this machine has the give knob, and the give knob, what it is, is basically uh, the pushing element that expels the needle in and out, but also you can control how much cushion that uh, pushing ele element has uh, towards the needle. So when we're talking about stiffening the give, what we're talking about is basically uh, turning the pushing element into a hard pushing uh, element, right? Now, when we're softening the um, the give, what we're doing is we allowing that pushing element to actually have some recoil. And why uh, you would want to have some recoil? Well, maybe um, perfect. This this actually applies perfectly for uh, those artists that that work the sensitive areas. Let's actually uh, take the example of my wife. She's a cosmetic uh, tattooer, and when she tattoos the lips, she may dial the machine in the slower, I'm sorry, in the softer setting to actually move faster without uh, causing a lot of trauma to the skin, a lot of irritation, a lot of swell and stuff like that. So by utilizing the mechanical feedback, now you can actually keep up with your hand pace uh, in certain areas that you would have had to slow down your hand pace in order not to damage the skin. So uh, let me break it up again. We have the voltage, we have the, uh, the hand technique, the hand pace, and now we have the mechanical feedback that we call in tattooing give adjustment. So this machine is offering you a wide range of control. And this is the reason why in some videos I say, well, maybe this is not the machine for everyone, uh, but definitely it's the machine for those that want to explore, uh, you know, all the possibilities of tattooing to those that want to explore doing things uh, never approached or thought before uh, with a tattoo machine because the machine is basically... Uh, ready to deliver upon request. This machine can be configured in any single way you want. So I talked, uh, I talked about uh, give adjustment, I talked about magnets, I talked about vaults, and I wanna make a video specifically talking about give uh, in another episode, but I wanna move on with more features that this machine possesses. And one of them is the fact that now we can also change in this machine uh, the stroke. Let me see if this one has the stroke. Yes, right here. So right here. And again, some of you uh, have seen videos like that where I'm actually replacing the stroke. And I'm gonna do it one more time because uh, we got so many emails, people asking us about which stroke is for which, okay? So I have the little Allen key that comes in the little bag. You guys should find it right here in the box, right there, right there. So this, this, this little Allen key right here, okay? All right, so let's... Uh, Switch cameras again. I'm getting tired of speaking so fast. We talked about voltage. We talked about hand pace. We talked about give adjustment. Now we're talking about stroke. Why not? Okay, so what is stroke in reality? So basically the stroke is the actual mechanical displacement of the driving element, okay, in the tattoo machine. Let's not confuse stroke with throw or needle hang. Two completely, two completely things. So. The machine from the Gecko comes with a 3.2 stroke, okay? And uh, I know that a lot of you are, man, this is a little bit complicated, but this video is for those that want the knowledge because you can simply pick up this machine, plug it in, and start tattooing because the machine comes configured uh, with a standard configuration for, to suit most people, which is basically the configuration that I use in most situations. But anyway, for those that like the details and like to learn everything about the machine and get the most out of it, here I go talking about the stroke. So now uh, understanding that the stroke um, basically affects the mechanical displacement of the driving element that, pr that propels the needle, um, you can also use that towards your advantage. And why I say that? Well, for example, for lining, a lot of people like a little bit more of a longer, uh, uh, longer stroke, right? So remember, a stroke is translated into a motion that goes back and forth. So the longer I go, the more momentum uh, I have when I travel forward. So basically that applies into tattooing. 
uh, most of the time into a little bit more of stroke or hit or strike, okay? So a lot of people that like the longer stroke for lining, those that do, you know, heavy lining, may opt for using the longer stroke, which is the uh, 3.7 in this machine. Now, guys like myself, I don't even bother with the 3.7 because to be honest with you, um, 3.7, it's great. Uh, 3.2 is also great for me because, uh, you know, I it allows me to dial the machine uh, down a little bit more while keeping up the speed that I like for uh, my lining or shading or whatever I'm doing. But at the same time, uh, I feel the machine is a lot more stable. And when we understand that, you know, what goes in inside the skin is about half a millimeter to a millimeter max, you know, lining with a 3.2 is plenty of basically penetration to, uh, you know, to go into the skin in and out. Um, the longer the stroke is, probably the slower you are going to become, and therefore you're gonna have to increase the voltage to keep up with that. Now, remember, the more volts we apply to this machine or any machine out there, the more current is going to be drawn from the power supply. Current, drawn, resistant, and all that stuff uh, is going to, uh, it's going to uh, take in effect. And of course, if you run the machine super, super high and stuff like that, the machine may feel warm, uh, but uh, that's in excessive uh, string conditions. So uh, always try to keep the machine running within those parameters because that's another question that I want to address. Um, well, you know, how much is too much? And basically, too much is basically uh, something that you're not comfortable with, you know, something that uh, you're not getting the desired result, uh, you know, something that you know that is excessively uh, too much and you can see that you're beating the skin and stuff like that. Um, I was talking to a guy the other day um, and he actually came to the shop and, and, you know, he showed me some of his work, you know, he's been tattooing, he's not from this country, he's been tattooing for a while and he was showing me some, some of his line work and um, he showed me a work, uh, a photo of a work, fresh work that he did with a 14 round line, all right? And he told me, I've heard that I can line with this line on 14 round line. So I, I saw his work, right? And I noticed that his line looked completely sunken in into the skin, right? Like the line looked like carved in into the skin. And then I saw his work and his work healed uh, perfectly. But definitely, you know, uh, we were talking about that and I'm like, you know, why is that? It's like, yes, I know, I don't know why, you know, I always get this result. So we started talking about the way he tattoos and he, he tells me that he runs the machine uh, uh, really high because that's the way he was told that he should run the machine. And um, I tell him, have you ever tried to run the machine, you know, a different vault? And, you know, I was giving him the same uh, explanation. Start slow, you know, pick it up and, 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 you know, and see what really works for you because definitely you're not pleased with, you know, leaving your customers with this, uh, you know, with this trauma on the skin, even though the tattoo is going to heal fine and his work is actually kick ass. Um, but he wanted to improve that side of tattooing. So I was telling him that I, I told him a little bit about the give, how the give can help him as well, uh, for that lining, because it would allow him to actually go fast. It would allow him actually to go a uh, high, how he's used to, but the machine will pick up that part of the equation, which is the recoil and, and, uh, and therefore avoiding that additional, a uh, non-beneficial penetration into the skin that results into uh, maybe a line looking a little bit sunken, uh, sunken in, uh, and 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 you know not good for the picture, not good for the client that's taking the tattoo. Therefore, um, that there was a room for improvement right there. Uh, yes, there's a lot of questions, guys. So I am going to address it, uh, address them right now. So again, let me. Go back again, we talked about voltage, we talked about hand pace, we talked about give adjustment, we talked about stroke. So the fifth component is actually the needle depth. I mean, the needle throw, okay? The throw of the needle, which is actually a pseudo, uh, a pseudo stroke because once we're clicking uh, the grip, once you're telescoping the grip, in reality, we're not changing the mechanical displacement, therefore the force that the needle is pushing at. What we're changing is how much needle is actually sticking out from our tip. So let me just do something right here really quick and let me zoom in. So here we have this this this, uh, this carcher right here. I don't know, let me just put it against black background so you guys can see the tip. So basically what we're doing when we adjust the grip is basically 
pulling the needle further or closer from the, here we go, further or closer closer from the driving element, you know, in this case is the drive pin. So we're not changing any mechanical displacement. Uh, the driving element is actually moving at whatever stroke you have your machine set at. But, you know, when we telescope and we click, basically we are causing the needle to come closer to the pushing element or a little bit further. Therefore, that translating into more or less needle uh, showing up in front of your, you know, in front of your tip. So, um, and again, this is not a how-to uh, tattoos, but you may know why you want to have more or less needles sticking out. Uh, that part, I leave it up to you guys. So, let me take a pause right now, and let me read some of the comments, because there are so many comments, and I don't think I'm going to be able to go through all of them, so allow me just to go through them. Some of them. All right, I'm going to pick some questions. All right, um... A lot of people in Spanish. I'm going to probably do this video in Spanish, in Espanol, pronto. Um, all right. What else? Oh, man, there's so many questions. Okay. So, a lot of people are talking about the Spectra Edge X. And uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to mention this. Okay. I still love my Spectra Edge X. And someone asked me, should I get this machine? I have your Edge X and I love it. Should I change? Is this machine supposed to uh, be better? than any of your other machines out there. And this is a question that I hear all the time. What does this machine bring that uh, your other machine doesn't bring? And when you think about it, it doesn't bring anything new. Uh, if you have a Halo, you already you already have the give, you already have the, the option of uh, adjustability of the stroke. Uh, you also have the, uh, the click ergo, which would allow you to telescope and use cartridge or standard needle. So this machine, what it brings, into the equation is a new format of tattoo machine. It's basically a compilation of, uh, you know, the grip and the machine. And it's just another uh, tool, you know, that you may find it more suitable than other machines, or you may find them that some other machines suit you better than this machine. You know, the decision is going to be yours. It's not going to be ours. And basically, the only thing that I can tell you is, you know, you get a product that is backed up by the same research and development that all the products that we have created before. So if you uh, like what we are bringing on the table, you already know what you're facing with this product. Again, let's go let's move forward. Uh, okay, so you're okay. a lot of things in Spanish. Okay, someone is asking if the machine has uh, hit graduation. Hit graduation, strike graduation, we call it give. And one thing that I want to show you guys, um, you guys are going to find this on the, uh, on the uh, box. Right here, you have some instruction how to adjust the give. And right here, you have some other instruction how to change the stroke. Uh, and on the other side, the certificate of authenticity. Anyway, moving forward. Okay, we have one right here. This is from TJ Lazon. I pre-order a Scion, and I was wondering when Needle Supply will get them. I was supposed to be on the 1st of November, the 27th. They're saying they have... Uh... Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, this question is actually related to, uh, to distributors and this machine. You guys got to understand that within the first week, we got thousands of orders. Not hundreds, but thousands. So um, a lot of distributors are getting their machine, and obviously there is some logistic that goes on with our uh, distribution department distributors. Um, so there are a lot of things that, that need to happen. Number one, we need to have the motors in stock. And again, you guys know that this motor is the motor that we developed. Uh, it's a motor that took us almost a year and a half uh, to fine-tune, and little by little we're getting motors. Now, I know that we're due about, in, in between this week and next week, about... 2,500 motors, and again, don't don't quote me on this because I know a lot of you guys call uh, FKR and say, "Oh, I've heard Gaston saying that." Don't quote me on these. I, I don't handle this uh, logistic uh, logistic uh, matters, but yes, we're getting more and more and more motors. So as we're getting motors, we're building machine. We are producing. We actually got two new CNCs that are not even here yet. They're going to be delivered to actually expedite the production even further. So that's going to put us with 14 CNC machines. Crazy. So your distributor is going to get the machine, I would assume, fairly soon because we are completing uh, outstanding orders. Uh, I know that we are waiting for some motors that are going to come this week. So expect everyone to start getting their stuff within the next two weeks, okay? 
Um, and also to all those that have pre-order on our website, all the pre-orders have been fulfilled. All the pre-orders from October have been fulfilled. Now, November, we have on the website notice that say that it can take up to 25 days. We're still fulfilling daily machines. Um, this week, you know, we're waiting for this motor, obviously. But, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue fulfilling machines. And remember, you know, we have to build every single machine. And we're not going to release a machine that does not go through all the uh, testing uh, steps. And testing, I think, has been the key of the success of our product and, and the key of a lot of you guys being really happy with the machine. I'm looking at the comments. So please have some patience. It's a brand new product. Uh, we faced a lot of challenges with a brand new product. Uh, uh, we ourselves are getting familiar with a lot of you know aspects of how to expedite the process. So uh, we're shipping as fast as we can, guys. That's what I can tell you. And of course, by before the end of the year, everyone should have all all their machines and that's actually a stretch but i'm talking about distributors and other people that may uh replace in order because a lot of the distributors are getting the machine but they're selling now all right uh okay i think about the artists and more than anything okay so uh uh sick uh with with by says i think i think it about artists hen more than anything i run my halo between seven and nine for everything but i run my stylus at 11.4 just throwing it out there so basically uh what he's saying right there is that he does not marry us to a voltage and things that that voltage is going to apply to every single machine so you know every machine is going to have different requirements and again guys uh if you feel that the machine is too fast dial it down if you feel the machine is too slow dial it up it's that simple voltage is there to uh, induce the power in the motor to achieve the RPM that you're looking for. Uh, some motors do it at lower volts. You know, some motors uh, require less voltage to, to get you here. Some motors require a little bit more voltage to get, to get you here. That has to do with the size of the motor, the magnets in the motor, the winding, and a lot of stuff. So um, just wanted to throw that out there at myself as well. Uh, na, 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 na. Oh yeah, so guys, um, I've seen a lot of you guys making reviews for the sign. I really appreciate it. We're probably gonna, uh, we're gonna do. Uh, we were thinking about doing a contest and picking the best sign review, and uh, that's probably gonna happen uh, next year because a lot of you guys are putting a lot of effort, and we really appreciate it. Uh, now that we are on YouTube more often, you know, we are acknowledging all that stuff. Uh, okay, <clears throat> okay, R Martinez. Okay, so R. Martinez is asking, what is the largest configuration it would push for a mag? So I pushed, I think the biggest one I pushed was the 27 Magnum, and that's just because it's the biggest one I have Magnum-wise. Um, I don't know if anyone makes uh, bigger than that, maybe like 30 or 35 or 31 or 32, something like that. But the most I pushed was 27 Magnums, and it pushes with these, uh, definitely with these. Um, you're not gonna have any problem pushing the biggest magnet now myself needles 14 18 round liners some people say 18 right liners um, um i believe they there are some 18 round liner cartridges as well i've never used them i think they're brutal it's way too much for uh to to blast the skin with 18 round liners at once especially if you want to do lining but again hey listen whatever works for you uh, i'm sure that if you find a needle that you can throw in the machine and you dial at the correct vaults you're going to be able to do that um all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, I'm gonna do the video in Spanish. Okay, so Christian or Ogando say, I never thought I could ride so precise on the skin with a motor machine, but with a Halo 2, it's incredible. The sign must be better because it has less vibration. Yes, I would say that the sign is so quiet to the hand. Uh, and again, think think of uh, the machine as you grabbing the machine, the motor, and the grip all together. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, okay. So there are so many questions. So I am going to uh, call it a day with a text, uh, with a text, with the comments right here. And uh, okay. So someone is asking. <laughs> Uh, warranty. Okay, warranty on the machine is standard warranty. Uh, anything that is a uh, manufactured defect, like a uh, grip, uh, a body, or other things that uh, you know 
metallic parts, you know, they are covered under warranty. And, you know, you should realize if something, something goes wrong right from the get-go. I mean, there is nothing that can break on the machine, uh, you know, me metallic parts, uh, unless you do something wrong. Now, it is very important that when you insert the grip, you know, you're gentle with it. Because remember, right here we have some threading. So this is the reason why I wanted to add the extra the extra o-rings because that will give you additional stability uh therefore avoiding the cross threading you know so i've never heard of anyone actually having that problem but you know when you go just do things you know soft you know be gentle to the machine uh you should be fine now parts like sliders and stuff like that internals that are subject to wear uh like uh bearings and stuff like that well number one they're going to be really easy to replace number two we're going to have them available and those parts are not uh covered under warranty because they're subject to wear you know be uh, a bearing in the cam may last you years uh but at some point those bearings may go bad i mean bearing go go, go bad uh or or any of the parts that you know glide back and forth however if you keep your machine clean always use cartridges with membrane i repeat always use cartridge with membrane and yes i've said in some other videos you know if you um you know you could use cartridges with no membrane i've used them myself but until i had an accident and i'm like you know what i'm never going to give that advice ever again so always use cartridges with membranes because they they exist and they will refrain you guys from contaminating uh the machine within so um that's it now I say membrane and I say contamination. Don't think that because you use cartridge with membrane, you're not supposed to clean the grip. The grip is supposed to be clean after every single tattoo and it's supposed to be clean with a solution that actually uh, will kill MARSA, will kill tuberculosis, will kill hepatitis, HIV, and all the, uh, all the kinds of uh, diseases that are out there that can get someone hurt or sick. So, um, regardless of what you use. And you can also click, uh, clean the, uh, the gib knob. You can actually pop it like this. Let me show you. And now you can clean this thoroughly and you can clean all around there. Uh, let me show you this one more time. So once you remove the motor, you can actually push the element that's right here and actually it costs it to protrude even more and you can clean it with again whatever cold sterilization product same with this but be sure not to contaminate the machine now with uh with the solution that you're going to be using uh for cleaning the machine because the machine comes pre-lubricated and whatever that travels in there is going to interfere with uh, uh cohesive uh reciprocating uh sliding uh, motions that happen here in this machine so guys Thank you very much for watching this video. I am going to be making this video in Spanish because I see all the comments that we get in Spanish. I wanted to put this video together for all of you guys to, um, you know, catch a tip or two, uh, maximize your spectra sign, and, uh, you know, keep uh, making comments of things that you may want me to talk about because, you know, I'm here to help, guys. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you soon in another episode here on YouTube and FK Irons. Take care, guys.